What's going on, party people? We're here, and I'm here to basically walk you through the MIDI importer plugin that I created recently. This plugin goes through and takes a MIDI file that you provide and generates a animation in Blender based off of the notes inside of the MIDI file. So whenever a certain like C, D, you know, whatever note is pressed, it'll actually press it inside of Blender, or not press it, but you know, animate a keyframe to show it being pressed in some sort of way. Kind of get into it. Um, as you can see here, I have a file that's kind of like already set up with some of the stuff that we need. Uh, basically just a 3D piano, but you could do this and I'll show you later, just any object or any sort of like 3D kind of like thing. Here I have just piano keys and you can see the keys are labeled per like letter. So we start off with the C key, the D key, E, and we also have black keys. Those are also labeled per, so you see C sharp, D sharp, all that good stuff. Uh, and then we also have MIDI buttons up here to kind of simulate kind of like a MIDI keyboard. And these are also like mapped to uh, buttons as well. So you can see, or piano keys. Uh, so C, D, E, all that stuff. That just helps us get started. Um, you kind of want basically one object for each note but you don't have to have one. You can honestly just animate with like one or two notes, but to do a full piano animation, you need a full piano. So this is kind of that setup. So let's start with the first step. Let's pick a MIDI file. I'm going with Mega Man Legends here and the Apple Market from the PS1 game. As you can see, once you pick a MIDI file and it loads up properly, you'll get a list of tracks that come out here. And if the MIDI file is good enough, it'll actually let you know like what kind of instruments are going on with each of the particular tracks. Um, if not, I highly recommend just basically downloading Audacity and that'll allow you to visualize the keyframe. So you can see here, I have this uh, MIDI file open on Audacity and on Audacity, you can see all the different channels here and the channels basically represent the different tracks in the MIDI file. So you can go through and say, hmm, track one, that's what this is. Track two, that's what that is. Track three. And you can also just kind of see what the animation is going to look like, where you'll see the frequency of the notes, what kind of notes get hit, things like that. So this is a really good like visual debugging tool to kind of understand what's going on. So once you have an idea of what tracks that you're kind of interested in, uh, you can basically come down and you can also set which octave you're interested in. Uh, basically, we have a way of condensing all the different notes into one like kind of like band or whatever. So if you have a C3 versus a C4 getting hit, it doesn't matter. It'll just assume that it's just C. Uh, but otherwise you may want to specify a certain octave, but you can also control different parts of the animation. Um, I'm going to be animating these MIDI buttons first because these are kind of like a really simple example of just animation in general. Uh, so with these MIDI buttons, what am I going to be doing? I basically want to move the Z axis here. And you can see me moving the object up and down. This is kind of what I want to happen when it's animating. So let's take a look. When I move it in the direction that I want to, you can see that I'm moving it in the Z, a negative like 0.2. Cool, so let's undo that. And then let's come over here and we want to change this to the Z axis because that's the one that we want to move it in. And let's change this to 0.2. We don't have to put in the negative because we will handle that with the direction. And we're assuming that we're traveling down in the zero, in the Z axis. So down is fine, but we could also reverse that direction using this. So we want to move the object. I'll cover it later, but you can basically do moving, scaling, or even rotating of the object. Um, and you can also control the speed of the MIDI song. So if you want the playback to be like really slow motion or really fast for any particular reason, um, this is a quick way to toggle that as well. But we actually need some keys to animate. Um, you can see here that I have some assigned, but let's just remove these real quick. You could manually go and take the C1 and correlate it to the C and vice versa and all that stuff. But since I have all these like neatly labeled, you can actually come in, select the collection, click auto assign keys, and that'll automatically assign all of the keys that it can find that are labeled to each piano key. So this anything that's labeled dot C will go to the C key, anything labeled dot G, dot the G key, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, really useful when you're switching between things, like here I can go and I can select the piano keys, quickly select those, 
and then I can come back and then quickly select the buttons if I need to apply a different animation. So now we have all of our buttons. These are the ones I want to animate. Like I said, we're animating in the Z axis. We're moving them down like a little bit, 0.2, and move down. And we can generate our animation. You ready? Uh, as you can see here, we have no animation keyframes, but when I press this button, we have some animation keyframes. And you can see as I press play, we can see that the MIDI file that I had is basically being translated into these animation keyframes. I do, you'll notice that when this animates, um, I have the keys kind of light up. Uh, that isn't part of the plugin. That's just like Blender Material Magic. Uh, but I could show that in a later tutorial, just how stuff like that is done. But it's it's very kind of, it's kind of simple, depending on what you're doing. <laughs> so now that we have the MIDI keys animated on top, let's animate the piano keys on the bottom. So like I mentioned, we can basically come up here. Let's select the collection with all the piano keys inside of it. And let's auto assign those keys. You can see all my piano keys are now selected. And then we can come over here. Let's select a different track. Let's select the piano for the piano. Now, with the piano keys, if you're familiar with how a piano works, they don't move up and down like a button does. They technically rotate on an axis like a fulcrum. So I'll be actually rotating them on the x-axis. And ideally, we'll be wanting to rotate them about 2 to 3, maybe like 2.5. Cool. So we have the piano selected, we have the x-axis selected, we have our object rotating, it's rotating up, that'll make sense later, and it's rotating by 2 degrees. Let's run the piano key animation, and you can see we have some keyframes generated for our piano. Pro tip when you're working with these kind of animations, um, and you want to add some music to make sure that you're timing it correctly, you can come into the animation panel, or basically just create a panel and make sure that you have the sequencer available. You want to go in here, and then you can just drag an MP3 file. You actually can't use MIDI files inside of Blender, so you'll have to convert the MIDI file to an MP3 to be able to use it. Or you can find the actual orchestral version of it, which would probably sound better. But... Um, in this case, we'll bring over a, M a MIDI file that's been converted to MP3. And you can see here when I play it, it matches to the music. I'll also be releasing this free template alongside the plugin that'll kind of get you started to understand like what you need to do to be able to set up a file to more easily animate. Um, so I have a file here that's kind of set up with uh, piano keys. And it also has uh, these MIDI buttons that I've also kind of like showed off. And this is the same kind of concept. You can basically just uh, take these kind of piano keys, add them to the piano key selection, and animate this just like you would uh, like a 3D keyboard. And this ideally uh, works really well in Eevee. So if you just wanted like a really quick uh, render instead of just something that takes like a long time, this is also a great option. Um, and it looks really good because it's like a 2D kind of graphic style. Um, and it kind of also showcases some of the techniques that I was uh, mentioning earlier, like when a button goes like down and it lights up, um, or a button rotates and it lights up. Um, these kind of things are all kind of outlined inside of the template. So you can just kind of see the material and see how I set some of these things up. And to give you an idea of kind of the potential of this kind of like plugin, I basically came and created another little quick uh, MIDI animation. This takes a pocket station that I've created before in the past, and I take the pocket station lid, which is like a separatable lid on the product itself, and it's able to kind of rotate like out and I apply that rotation to the MIDI uh, kind of song. So in this particular case, I have the Chocobo uh, kind of like song from FF8 playing. <laughs> this is a great example of uh, something using rotation um, in the plugin to be able to achieve that. And then to give you an idea of something kind of like layering these kind of techniques, um, it, using the same kind of track data, I'm also taking a chokeable sprite, and I'm also 
taking that sprite and moving it up and down at the rate that the notes are also being played. So you can see that when one of the um, kind of like panels is actually rotated up, we actually also slide up a chocobo sprite at the same time. So it kind of like animates this quick little like sprite animation on the screen and up and down along with the animation. So you can just use the MIDI plugin to kind of stack just multiple different tracks, the same track and do it just different ways. Um, you can really get creative with the kind of like output uh, that you're getting here. It's just another form of just procedural animation basically. And of course, once you have this kind of like set up, all this is capable of being imported into things like geometry nodes. So you could start taking this data and you could just start instancing it um, and using it in kind of these procedural kind of stacked ways. So you're using the same kind of note data, like all the notes are being pressed at the same time, but I'm able to create just a way different visualization um, that's using this kind of like geometry node uh, kind of layering technique. This one I believe is the Zelda theme. A lot of potential with this, really fun. Um, I've made a lot of animations that you've seen in this video and they're just really fun to put together. Like once you find a good song and you see kind of like the tracks laid out and you see how the notes and the beats kind of like rhythmically go, it really just inspires you to maybe create like a different kind of like motion design, um, animation, you know, composition. It's, it's really, it really guides your work in a particular way. It's really cool. Let me know if you have any ideas, if you're interested in like doing anything weird with it that you currently can't. Um, I'm always interested in seeing what new features I can add that I didn't already think of and stuff. If you're interested in the plugin, uh, basically head over to my GitHub and it's called Blender MIDI Keyframes. And you can head over to the releases section where I basically post up a zip file and you can just install that into your Blender and it should just work. You can also find plenty of instructions on the Blender. I kind of um, write some tips and tricks. Um, like I mentioned, I'm gonna try to post the uh, 2D template also on the GitHub so you can see that and have a quick uh, reference point. And uh, if you're interested in the source code, you can always just dig into. And if you're seeing that you need to extend the functionality of the plugin in a certain way, go for it. You know, have fun. If you're interested in how I made this plugin, I actually did write an article on my blog. You can head over to my blog and basically just see a breakdown of just how I walk through the process from start to finish, how we parse MIDI files, how we interpret the MIDI file data, how the MIDI file data gets converted into animation data in Blender. Um, some nice little tips and tricks if you're into developing uh, Blender Python plugins and stuff like that. But cool. That's kind of it. That's, that's the plugin. Um, there's maybe a couple of features I didn't cover, but I think they're documented and stuff. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, let me know on social media. You know where to hit me up. I have a couple of different networks and stuff, you know, X, Twitter, whatever they call that, Threads, Mastodon. Uh, hit me up. Ask me any questions. I've already gotten a couple bug reports on Mastodon. Shout out to the homie. Um, but yeah. Hope you guys like the plugin. Have fun. Get creative. <laughs>